G'day, Michael here. I'm the other half of BaconCut.com. Uh, you'll have seen Rachel in all the other videos. This is one that, well, it suits me because I'm the coffee guy in the place. Um, now, we've bought a lot of appliances over the years and there's plenty of them on the bench and I'm sure you have many yourself. Some of them are really quite useful machines and make life better and give you different options that you wouldn't have otherwise been able to you know, explore. But some machines are really like best suited for like landfill or recycling or never having been made in the first place. Some of that has to do with what you do and how you like to live your life. And other things have to do with, well, that wasn't such a great idea after all. All right, now, one such landfill machine, well, in more, way, more ways than one, was a, a coffee pod machine we bought for when we were traveling a lot. Now, uh, they seemed like a good idea. You buy, you know, your pods and you can make yourself a, a flash little espresso and it's convenient, great for in the caravan, easy, or if you're in the US, in the trailer. Um, so, you know, we could have sort of a bit of luxury away. But we bought that a couple of years after we bought this machine. So this is actually quite an old machine. And it's a bare bones espresso machine. It was like a $200 machine. I think the espresso, uh, the pod machine costed us slightly more. Now, the, the convenience of these machines is not quite as high as the pod machines, but it's not much less. There's cleanup with both machines. Uh, using an espresso machine, if you pay attention, even in the coffee shops where everything's organised in such a way that, you know, they've got a routine, everything's set up specifically for that job, you notice there's a lot of cleanup. So there's always a lot of cleanup with coffee machines. So you're not going to escape that. And the pod machines are only marginally better for the cleanup, but what you put in the bin, which is uh, something we noticed when we were travelling, is most of our waste, most of our rubbish was actually pods. We, we produce very little rubbish otherwise. Um, domestically here, we've got like a typical kitchen caddy, it's pretty much a, our weekly waste. Even though we do use packaged foods, uh, they're not just super duper greenies and so forth, but you know, um, we find that our waste is minimal. Uh, our recycling is minimal. We often don't actually have to put the bin out for collection. And I run another business, a joinery next door, just the outside of that wall, and between the household and the joinery, we still don't generate enough to put the recycling bin out regularly, and often the main bin doesn't go out. So we don't generate a lot of waste, but when we're traveling with the pod machine, we noticed that about two thirds, three quarters of our waste was actually coming out of the pod machine, because you'd make you know, a couple of coffees each, so it's four coffees, but you'd uh, tend to be using like two pods to get the flavour or whatever you want and we found that we'd want to pour them short like an interrupter process so as to not get that crazy bitter which introduces another point with having a espresso machine you're in control of every process this thing essentially produces hot water and steam and you direct how it gets used so and how long it gets used etc and so it means Whatever you do or don't like about a coffee, you can make this one do it. The pod machine is sort of stuck with their cycles, so you're a bit restricted for how imaginative you can be. You know, the best I could drive the pod machine to do was interrupt this, the flow as soon as you're losing your crema. But I noticed the crema was kind of, I'm going to say, sandy, not, not very nice. When you see me use this machine, and you'll see the crema from this machine, You'll understand what I mean. I'm, I'm confident you won't have seen crema like this out of a pod machine. So, also, the coffee is so expensive for the pod machines. Um, now, a good little friend to the coffee machine is also a burr mill. Now, this is again a bare bones basic thing, um, but the burr mills have a property in the fact that you set a kind of an orifice size, a grain size. It's not super accurate, but it does define sort of a range of size of particles of the coffee. Whereas if you use like a centrifugal type mill, basically the more you have it running, the more dustier it becomes. But it's not, uh, it's not a defined size. Whereas the burn mills have a defined size and eject 
you know, as the, the particles get down to the right size. So on these machines, you can adjust them to suit yourself. I found a little sweet spot here, which, I, which is actually about there. 11 on this machine. I don't think the 11 denotes anything. I think it's just a scale, so you can work out with it more or less. Different machines might have some other number that works. Now, there are two, uh, <laughs> two schools of thought. One is to have very, very fine grind in the espresso machine, but careful not to pack it too densely because you can block the machine. And another way is to use the pressure. These things are designed to run at 15 bar, which is 15 atmospheres. Very high pressure, that's 15 kilograms per square centimetre. I don't know what that is in PSI, but it's a lot. Uh, not many uh, plumbing systems are designed for that kind of pressure. It's very high pressure. Okay, so these machines have the ability to generate pressure, and the reason for that is so you can force it through the coffee. So my, my theory is that I make the grind as fine as I can get away with packed tight and use the pressure from the pump to extract the coffee. But you don't have to do that. The whole point about these machines is you're in control and you can play with it however you like. Now, I found rough rule of thumb. Uh, the more coarsely ground the coffee is, the less bitter it is. But also, the length of pour. The more you pour out, extract from the coffee, the clearer the, uh, the coffee becomes, the more of the bitter you have and it's sort of run out of flavour by the time you get there. So, I tend to want to stick to where it's still putting out beautiful crema. Um, that's my taste. You do what you like. Also, my wife and I, uh, she likes kind of thick carvable froth, the stuff that will stick to your spoon and pile up like whipped cream. Whereas I would probably prefer like you see in latte art, where you see, you know, uh, more of a fine silken type flowing milk frothing. So for us, I do a bit of a, uh, a bit of a clutch. It's kind of over frothing, but I'll try and show you how the various bubble sizes affect the way the milk behaves. And we also use soy milk, which behaves differently to cow's milk. So there's a few things you would want to play with yourself. But with a pod machine, you don't get that choice anyway. At best, you have some sort of frothing mechanism that puts a certain amount of air in for the amount of milk that goes through. That's what we had on our machine. Uh, the other thing you might have, some sort of whisk where you just whisk it up which is kind of like aerating it, it's not really the same. Uh, forcing steam into the milk gives you a completely different control. You can make this very homogenous, uh, like, they use the term like micro bubbles and things like that, but basically it's a very fine foam, or depending on how you set it up, whatever you want to do. In any case, you're in control, the machine doesn't dictate to you, you dictate what you like out of it. So if you want a bit more of this or a bit less of that, you adjust things to suit yourself. All right, now this machine uh, can handle by like, pouring two cups in one go. Just go to the filter where it's gone. There it is. But you can have a smaller filter that goes in this place. Now there'll be coffee in this from the last of the cups of coffee I've made. I might get the other camera ready. Give me a sec. Right, so camera's in place. Right, other camera's running. Right, so. With the coffee, we start with beans, of course. Okay, so here's the first variable we start with. We start with beans. So you can see the beans, focus. The beans, we can, we can choose how roasted they are. You can choose what kind of coffee it is. There's, there's a lot to choose from. There's also different blends and things you can get. Um, so you can just experiment with what's available easily at hand at the supermarket or you can go to an elite little shop and, and play around as much as you like. Funny enough, the most expensive coffee you'll buy like this will probably be still cheaper per cup by a lot than the pods. I don't know um, very specifics for each different country, but I'll hazard a guess that'll remain a constant. All right, so I've got this container full here. It's about, a, I don't know, a couple of litres. Now I'll go over and top up the coffee mill. And I've just settled on a, a grind size that um, does the job nicely for this machine. Different machines might have different characteristics. All right, I better clean out this filter. Now, this is said filter. 
Here's the filter. Here's the other filter. Now this is designed for two cups. We like our coffee a little bit milder than most, or most coffee shops provide. So I actually put this across two mugs, not two cups. This is designed for one. All right, so I'll empty this out. Right, so this coffee, a mill, has got kind of an automatic function. They all have their own way of doing things. I've 3D printed this coffee tamper because I didn't like what came with the machine. Um, different grades of machines have different grades of everything, including tampers. What's interesting, this is like a $200 machine and you can buy a $1,000 and you can buy a $1,000 machine and the $1,000 machine can't really make you a better cup of coffee. It might do it more easily or more automated. Maybe a few more dials and gauges and things to watch the progress of various items. But at the end of the day, you are still in control. Now it's important to clear these surfaces here so you don't have um, any coffee sitting there because the seal underneath is vulnerable to you know, being cut by the coffee particles. Okay, actually I should turn this thing on before I do that. Now, this has been cleaned out only a couple of times in the life of the machine and it's, I think about it, eight years old the machine. Don't hold me to that, but it, it's that, that sort of neighborhood. Might be six years, might be 10 years, that sort of realm. Anyhow, I only ever use filtered water. Very important. Any debris that's in the water forms what they call a microfilm. Like it's a biological material builds up gungy, sort of a gungy film in the anywhere in the water flow. That includes inside the pump and so forth in the machine. Now you can see it's got a very clever little valve here. That I picked up this container and there's no water coming out. So I'll just fill this up with water. Okay, so I installed the um, Now, the initial thing when you turn them on is they prime themselves. The pump needs to prime. On this machine, it's, it has a small uh, light to indicate that it's heating, rather like an oven does. Basically, when that light's on, the element's working, so it is not ready for use. It will come on during use because the heating block, obviously, when water's going through it, cools it down, the thermostat kicks in and, and increases, makes increase the temperature again. This particular machine is a little bit illogical to my thinking. Turn the knob to the left and either water or steam comes out of the tube on the right. Turn it to the right and it does the actual extraction of coffee. Um, so you get the choice of you know, on off, steam, water, you know, left or right, which way you direct it. So that's basically it. It's kind of a stop, go, up, down type setting. There's not much to it. Uh, with the pod machine you had like, on the one we had, I think you had six buttons of what sort of programming you might want. So actually it's kind of more things to control on the machine, even though it was a dumb up for what it did. So this is requiring you to be a little bit smarter yourself, but you're in control of everything. So, you know, you've got your options. Any second, this thing should heat up. It's usually pretty quick off the mark. There we go, it's done. Right, now, because this little machine has only got one block, one doing both the water and the steam, I found there's some little workarounds for me to get best performance out of the machine. And um, the, the way more expensive machines have, where you've got two blocks, one for steam, one for water, you don't have to think about this. But I found this works really well on this machine. And that is to set it for steam and simply run steam through this tube. Now, running the steam through this tube heats up the whole circuit to producing steam. But in the process, it produces a little spatter of water and cold um, fluid, so not, not hot enough for actually frothing the milk. So this came with this little jug, which is just ideal for frothing milk. Now, the, the volume you can build up with steaming the milk is up to sort of double the volume. I mean, you could actually do more than that, but I normally leave somewhere between a half and a third of the jug free to actually froth my milk. So, all right, I'll get some milk handy. As I said before, we use soy milk, which froths differently. In fact, it tends to froth a little bit excessively to how you might be familiar with, with cow's milk. But even varying cow's milk has um, 
Uh, has quite a bit of variation on the milk's empty. So it's about 60% full, that uh, jug. And as I was saying, I run steam through this circuit uh, to get everything up to temperature so it's producing nice steam. Not sure how well that'll show up. We'll see how we go. All right. this other camera will pick it up. Okay, once it's producing steam, so you can zoom in. You can see that the steam is quite generous now because I've heated everything up. Now, I don't really want to put my hand to meet the under the steam, but there's a small amount of water building up here. And you see that look at the cup there that it bounces back. So it's now producing really generous, strong steam, just because I've primed it. That's a very messy process, but um, I usually don't get it that messy. In any case, the having the steam coming out is important to always have fluids coming out of that tube. What is easy to have happen is that as the, the steam cools as you turn off the steam flow, it'll suck in milk and building up quite a lot of dirt. Anyhow, I'm paying attention here to the milk frothing. Um, adding air like that, you need a sloping, is by just having the, the steam come a little bit above the surface, or keeping the steam just below the surface actually just uh, adds heat and adds, adds a sort of a silken volume. So, blasting air in from the outside into the milk will produce much more frothy, fluffy, more carvable, and having the steam supplied just under the surface will more heat the milk. So somewhere between those two functions, you determine the bubble size of the milk. All right. For temperature, I use my fingers. It's getting there right now. I'm turn it off. Now I want it to exit before that stop ejecting steam. Now I'm going to switch this over to water, and here's the other side of, of managing the block. I'm bringing the block back down to water, hot water temperature, by running water through it. So it's producing hot water from my cups. super strong coffee, or super dry coffee I'm going to say, um, so I wanted some water in the cups, but the other side that's actually more important for this particular machine is that I brought the temperature now right for extracting the coffee. So, And this tube has been flushed out with water, so this uh, steam tube has not uh, filled up with milk by having the steam shrink and pull back milk. Now this is quite an important hygiene part of this. This tube is the one that gets the, the manky contaminations from milk. So you want to keep it clean, both outside and in. By flushing water through it, I've minimised the amount of um, build-up from inside, and I've wiped this down with just typical like Kleenex tissues. Now, what I like about the tissues, they're absolutely fresh and clean, they're compostable, and they've got a bit of scrub so you can clean things off. Don't be, mis don't be tempted to use something like a scourer to clean your coffee machine because it's too abrasive and it'll cut down any coatings and you might basically destroy your machine. All right, now I'm spending a lot of time talking and not getting on with the job. Now I'm gonna extract the coffee. How well does that show up? Okay, so here we go. It's switched over to water. Not this quality of crema. That is so beautiful. Alright, so now the milk's been sitting a little bit long. But what we'll see with the milk is perhaps, I'm not sure which camera angle is going to show up best, but here we go. Um, on top there'll be a thicker 
No, I've just got a teaspoon. On the top we have a thicker, frothier. That's from above. You see from the side. Oops. We can see it first. So you can see it's actually it's piled up nicely. So that's a, quite a carvable froth. But what we'll have, because of the way I've overdone this, there'll be a layer of white liquid down the bottom. So um, I'm going to try and bring this back to sanity. I'm going to put a spoon. No. Right. So I'll, I'll throw off what I can at the top. And we'll do that shot. Now I'm going to swirl the, the remnant of what's in there to try and homogenise the froth and the liquefied milk. It's been sitting a bit long. So here we go. Oh yeah, this looks quite beautiful. There we go. Does that show up nicely? Looks absolutely delicious. So, grab this camera. Let me show you what it's doing. So you can see it's focus. Quite deliciously piled up. And basically you can control the milk to look like whatever you want it to look like. If you want it really frothy, you can. If you want it look, um, if you want it very thin, you can have it that way too. You can see inside the jug, focus, it's quite a beautiful consistency. So you can make the milk how you like it, you can make the coffee how you like it. The proof of the pudding is always in the eating. Or in a case of coffee, it's in the drinking. It's a beautiful cup of coffee. You'll never get that out of a pod machine. Well, I guess. Feel free to like, share, subscribe, ask a question, leave a comment. Bye for now.